Kirsty Parker is co-chair of the National Justice Coalition. It's a group working to reduce Indigenous incarceration rates. She spoke at the launch of this report today and she joins us now from Canberra. Kirsty, welcome to you. Thanks for joining us on The Drum. I guess it's a, a simple question with a probably very complicated answer, but why would you say Indigenous youth detention rates are so incredibly high? Um, it's because collectively as a nation we have um, stopped being shocked by what are quite shocking statistics. And as you said in your, your introduction, Salil Shetty was talking today about the fact that our young people are 24 times more likely to be in prison than other um, young people. That's increased from 21 times in just the space of four years. So as the nation has started to turn its um, gaze, I guess, to these issues. They haven't done it with the energy that they need to. Uh, we haven't had the buy-in and the support from governments, and we haven't had a plan. And that's really what uh, we're talking about in this amnesty campaign and also the National Justice Coalition's campaigns, that we need to take a different approach. In that short period of time, that increase that you, you, you cite, Kirsty, is, is there a particular thing you would point to? Would it be the mandatory sentencing laws? Would it be other factors involved with policing or lack of legal resources? Is there something you can identify that is responsible for that change? It's all of these things. It's um, mandatory sentencing, which of course um, takes um, the ability of judges to take into consideration particular circumstances. Uh, bail laws where um, young people don't have the presumption of innocence, they're often locked up um, uh, while they're waiting to face court on matters that don't even carry a custodial sentence. It's um, access to places where people can be bailed to. Um, it's all manner of these things and that's why because it is a myriad of um, issues we need to find some way to bring them together to coalesce under a plan and under some justice targets. Kirsty, uh, Mr Shetty today made reference to, to something called justice reinvestment, a, f a phrase that I wasn't familiar with. Can you explain the concept to us and why it's important? I can. It's really about diverting the massive amounts of money that we spend on locking people up um, to community-driven solutions. Uh, Salil Shetty was saying today that it costs anywhere around $440,000 per year, per child, in juvenile detention. That's an extraordinary amount of money. And if we were to spend that sort of money in community programs, working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their organisations, um, we could see quite a magnificent turnaround in statistics. Yeah. You mentioned kids uh, going to jail uh, who uh, have not got a, a place they can be bailed to. To what extent is that a problem? Because I know in, in some of the areas in the, in the outer cities, the cities, uh, that's also a problem facing magistrates where I know I've spoken to them and they say, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, I can't give this person bail because this kid hasn't got a, pla a safe place to go to. And, and yes. that's important, isn't it? That is a big problem, that um, if um, a young person does not have a suitable address or a place where they can be bailed, they are kept in custody. So part of this strategy is to provide places where people um, can be bailed to. I also want to say that this campaign really is about quite specific targets that we're really hoping the Australian government can take a leadership position on with other state and territory governments around reducing incarceration rates amongst our people but also reducing the levels of disproportionate violence that we experience within a generation. Kirsty, I, I guess for a lot of people, they, they still think of part of the problem here being that, uh, that the, the rules aren't applied equally to, to Indigenous kids as they are to non-Indigenous kids and that non-Indigenous kids are given the benefit of the doubt, uh, a slap on the, risk from the, the on the wrist by the police and uh, moved on rather than being taken in. Is, is that kind of thing still happening or is it much more complex than that? It's much more complex than that and um, quite simply, if our children and our young people were just being given a slap on the wrist. Imagine what the figures would be um, beyond what they already are today. This um, whole approach is about investing in community-driven solutions and addressing the underlying root causes of crime. Not being tough on crime as such, but tough on the causes of crime, the things that propel people into a situation where they're likely to come into contact with the criminal justice system. And I'm talking here, of course, about education, employment, health, um, as well as a whole range of leg legislative measures. Let's get some more questions and comments from the panel. Judith Troth is with us in Melbourne. Judith. Yes, thank you, Kirsty. I'm most interested in this. I did an inquiry several times while I was in Parliament into Indigenous rates in prison, um, not only for children but for adults. But it also would be true, would it not, that once a child has been sent to 
jail or held in custody, the likelihood of them then returning is also much higher later Absol in life. Absolutely, you're so right. It is very hard to break the cycle. So we're trying to focus on early intervention, prevention and diversion. So avoiding our young people from coming into contact with the criminal justice system in the first place. So of course we need to deal with the current situation and our um, various laws um, go some way to that. But we want to avoid being in this situation mm. in 10 or 20 years. Sure. Kirsty, you said at the start that people have stopped being shocked by the types of things that you're talking about. What can be done to shock Australians out of their complacency on this? Well, we really have to appeal to, in some senses, people's hearts, but also, in some cases, um, their hip pockets. We hear continually from governments that money is tight. I think that Australian taxpayers would be very concerned to know um, the immense cost of keeping a young person locked up, especially um, for minor, um, minor crimes, for example, um, unnecessarily. Um, many of the uh, kids that are held in um, uh, detention on remand are then not sentenced to a custodial sentence. So it makes no sense to keep them inside. Um, extraordinary amounts of money going into keeping people in prison and therefore out of community, where in fact we could be investing in the community, and that's better for Australia. We have to be smarter about the way we administer justice. But of course, Kirsty, that can be politically a very hard sell, spending the money on community development, keeping kids out of the detention system, rather than on locking them up, which can sometimes still have votes attached with it. It can, but we are calling on governments to think beyond short-term election cycles. Um, we know that governments um, want to do what's popular, um, but if there is uh, bipartisanship on this issue, and we think that we can build that, we've seen it built with other targets under the government's closing the gap strategy around education, employment, infant mortality and health, we think we can also achieve bipartisanship on this as well, so that all political parties show some leadership on this issue and take um, those elements of the community that need to be convinced along with them. And Judith Troth in Melbourne, you've got something to add? No, I think that would be uh, to divert government's attention to saving money and keeping ch kids out of jail would be a wonderful objective. Yeah, I, I, th I, think, I think you need to get the, the judges and the magistrates on board mm. here because mm. I'm sure a lot of those judges and magistrates are reluctantly putting uh, kids in detention because they, they can't see a safe place for them, as you've said, in the community. And they, they look at it and they figure, well, I can't send this young kid back into the community, so they go to detention. So we need to demonstrate that the community is going to be safe for those children, don't we? And maybe those judges and magistrates should be speaking out as well. In fact, some of them are. We've seen a uh, judge in South Australia recently. In fact, we've seen um, judges in every state and territory virtually, every jurisdiction saying, my hands are tied, we have to be smarter about this. We can't tackle this issue with a very um, blunt weapon. We need to take into consideration all of the characteristics. It's, it's very complicated, but the answer is very simple. We need to resource this issue, we need to work with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, and we have to realise that this is actually good for all of Australia, not just Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but all of us. And finally, Kirsty, if we don't do that, if we don't prioritise it, as you say, what are the consequences of this rate of detention and incarceration for young Indigenous people? Well, we see the um, devastating and catastrophic impact of the absence of many good young people, um, adults and women, because incarceration rates for juveniles and women are growing at, at, at an inordinate rate. We see them taken out of community. That is a loss to the community. And uh, we know that it costs an extraordinary amount of money as well. We will see, unless we take some action, we will see a much worse problem in the next five or so years. When we see an 88% increase in the number of our people ending up in prison over a 10-year period from 2004 to 2014. It says we're not doing um, what we need to do and we need to take a different approach.